All right. And we are live. What's up, guys? How we doing? How we doing? How we doing? Uh, I think I got myself going on. Yeah, I see I got the live feed over here going. All right. Lit, lit, lit. Okay. So I'm the captain now. I'm sitting here in Chris's desk, and I am now the captain. But uh, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode one of Fed It. Uh, this is the new YouTube channel. On this channel, we're going to be talking about um, things that you guys have never heard me really talk about like that. Um, you know, the inspiration for this started, um, as you guys know, I did an episode with uh, DJ Academics a few weeks ago where we broke down the Melly case, we broke down the Pooh case, we broke down the... And give me ones in the chat, by the way, guys, if we are good with ones, if, if the sound is good and everything. I made sure to double check everything to make sure we were good, but I, sh I think we're all right here. Just give me ones in the chat if you guys are good. So, uh, where's your suit, bro? <laughs> okay, we got ones. I see one, two. Okay, all right, cool. Someone trolled me. Okay, so, um, so yeah, the inspiration for this channel, guys, started with, um, I mean, I had always wanted to kind of talk about this stuff, guys, and um, I just didn't really get a chance to. And you know what? Let's go all the way down memory lane. I got my own soundboard, by the way. I brought it back over here, right? <laughs> Brings back memories of me doing a games podcast by myself. But anyway, uh, so how this all started, guys, as you guys know, we dealt with a bunch of hate. I've been dealing with a bunch of hate. And back in like August, someone doxed me, bro. And they pretty much put out my real name. And if you Google my real name, right? It's Amro Photo, whatever. Y'all know what it is now at this point. Um, you're going to see uh, uh, like um, court documents come back. And one of them is a criminal complaint or an affidavit in support of a criminal complaint that I did when I was, in, was an agent, right? And uh, that came out and people figured out, oh, what the hell did this guy used to do? And, you know, they pretty much put one and two together. And some people are low IQ, you know what I'm saying? Pretty... And they're like, oh, he's a snitch. And in my head, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, uh, a snitch? What are you talking about? No, I'm the one that controls the snitches, bro. I was the agent. I was the controlling agent, you know, because you have informants and everything else like that, which I'm going to break that all down for you guys today. We're going to give you guys a crash course on law enforcement. But the main thing I'm trying to say here is that, so they dox me, right? And at that point, we had to do that five-hour video, right, um, where we uh, broke down and answered all the questions, you know, from all the haters, which... Our detractors never talk about that video that we did, but it is what it is, right? We broke down every rumor, did down to the T. I came with receipts, recorded phone calls. I came in with a whole bunch of evidence, right, that people were capping. But the smart people know and the other people, you know, don't know. And <clears throat> one of the questions I was asked is, hey, Myron, what did you do in the past? You know, there's some talk about you being a snitch or whatever the fuck. And I was like, okay, guys, I used to be a special agent of Homeland Security Investigations. It is what it is. That's what I used to do. I'm very proud of it. I'm very happy that I did it. It was a great career. And honestly, the reason why I didn't really like talk about it is because I wasn't sure, like, I wanted to go back, bro. Like, I wanted to honestly go back and do the job. Like, you know, it, it, you know, granted, it's not like um, the same financially, like I make way more now than I did back then. But that was a great job. It was a lot of fun, man. I really enjoyed it. It was a six-figure job. You know, we'll talk about how uh, feds get paid to versus state as well. We'll break that all down for you guys. But it was a, it was a fantastic career, and I really enjoyed it. And you know, when all that crap happened, I kind of had to like set the record straight and let people know. But obviously in the process, you know, I might have shot myself in the foot for getting back with them. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is, man. It was a fantastic career. I got nothing bad to say. Um, and that's that's kind of how this all started. And then from there, once I had to come out about what I used to do, I did an episode with DJ Academics on Spotify. It actually trended for a while. And um, what happened was, uh, we broke down a bunch of criminal cases, big criminal cases uh, that, you know, from hip hop artists and stuff. We talked about the Pushaisi case. We talked about the 6 9 case, Casanova, uh, Melly. We talked a bunch, a bunch of different cases. And, you know, I, I pretty much used a lot of my experience in that to, you know, to kind of uh, be a young boy. We talked about all that stuff. You know, we talked, we looked at the criminal documents. We looked at the um, the charges. We looked at the evidence. And, you know, I was giving you guys my pretty much my prediction on what's going to happen as far as like, are they going to do time? What are they looking at? You know, the differences between the state and the feds, you know, for some of you guys that know, like Melly's case, for example, is state. It's a murder case versus like Pusha ISD and Casanova and 6 9 Those were all federal cases. And we're going to break that down to the differences between fed and state. Um, but uh, but cool. So we went over what led to this, right? Like how you, I, I basically got doxxed and now I'm here and it actually ended up making us a new channel. So, okay. Hi haters. Right. And then uh, second, uh, the demand came from after we did the DJ academics interview. And now third, let's talk about my qualifications to talk about this. Right. So who the fuck are you, Myron, to be talking about this stuff? Are you even, you know, qualified? So, um, I'll tell you guys a little bit about myself, right? So I used to be, you know, and, I'm, and I'll go over exactly how my career started and everything. So uh, 
I was a special agent with Homeland Security Investigations, okay, guys? HSI, all right? And HSI is a component of something called ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement. So HSI is an umbrella. So ICE is here, right? You got Immigration and Customs Enforcement, and it's broken down into two different branches, okay? So it comes down to Immigration and Customs Enforcement, Enforcement and Removal Operations, and then you got Immigration Customs Enforcement, Homeland Security Investigations, right? So these are the two things, ERO, HSI, all right? ERO, guys, is responsible for deporting illegal aliens, carrying out uh, administrative immigration law, uh, finding illegal aliens, reentries, whatever it may be, and actually physically arresting them and deporting them under set, uh, Title Eight. Title Eight, guys, in the United States is the Immigration Nationality Act, INA, okay? So that's what ERO does, all immigration, okay? They are one component of ICE. They are half of ICE. The other half, right, and when I say aliens, guys, I'm talking about illegal aliens, illegal aliens, undocumented aliens, uh, immigrants, okay? Uh, we call them aliens in the United States because that means they're a foreigner, okay? They're not They're not a United States citizen, okay? Anyone that is not a United States citizen is referred to as an alien. Let me look at this chat real quick too. Uh, make sure... Um, Cause y'all about to get a lot of sauce right now. I'm about to break it down for you guys and give you guys the the truth on everything. All right, so okay, so um, so you got ERO right? They do the the immigration law. Then on the other side, guys, those are deportation officers. Okay, deportation officers on the ERO side. Then you got HSI, Homeland Security Investigations. That's the special agents. Okay, they do the criminal cases. They do, you know, criminal investigations on money laundering, drug trafficking, drug smuggling, human smuggling, human trafficking. Uh, financial crimes, human uh, uh, child exploitation, right? You know, child pornography. Uh, you know, they do uh, arms trafficking, arms smuggling, um, anything basically, guys, that has to do with affecting interstate commerce or coming in or out of the country. HSI investigates. Okay, they they have they're the largest um, agency after the FBI, investigative agency after the FBI. They have the second most special agents, and they have the broadest authority of any agency in the United States. Yes, to include the FBI, they have more authority than them. Okay, so. That's who I worked for. I worked for them from 2010 to 2013. I was an uh, intern in Boston, Massachusetts. Okay. And then in 2013, I converted over from intern to special agent and I went to the academy. Okay. And the academy, guys, is in uh, Brunswick, Georgia, Glencoe, Georgia, right? Fletzy. Now everyone knows it, right? It's not a secret. Uh, I went there for about six months uh, and I graduated uh, in 2014. Okay. After I graduated in 2014, I went to my first duty office, my first field station, field office, which was in Laredo, Texas, guys. And for some of you guys that don't know, Laredo, Texas is on the Mexican border, baby. It's like right there. It's uh, literally, you could throw a rock, you know, like me, but that island over there, that's Mexico, bro. That, and I'm here in the United States in Laredo. Like it was that fucking close, all right? I was able to, you could literally throw a rock into it, into Mexico, right? And on the other side of Laredo was a town called Nuevo Laredo, okay? Which is in, in the Mexican state of uh, Tamaulipas, all right? And uh, Interstate 35, flows through uh, Laredo, Texas. It starts in Laredo, Texas, and it goes all the way up to, I think, Minneapolis, if I'm not mistaken. It goes through San Antonio, through Houston, through, excuse me, no, it goes through San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, and then it keeps going up north to, to all the major uh, cities uh, on the 35 corridor. Houston is Interstate 10, sorry, right? But on 35, once you get to San Antonio, you can you, basically that's a crossroads, which we'll talk about that a little bit more probably uh, when I talk to you guys about how I did smuggling case and everything else like that. But anyway, so um, I started my career in Laredo, Texas, right? So I was an intern first from 2010 to 2013 in Boston, Massachusetts. Shout out to the Boston field office. Then I uh, went over to the Laredo, Texas office. Uh, I was there from 2014 to 2018. Okay, I was there for four years. Then I left. I transferred over to the Miami office, okay? And I was in the Miami office from 2018 to 2020. I resigned, guys, December 4th of 2020. And I know you guys are going to ask, hey, what the hell happened? Long story short, I didn't get fired or any of this other stupid shit that people were saying. No, I, uh, quite frankly, they brought me in. They didn't like my YouTube channel, okay? They said, hey, you got to put this stuff on hold. You know, this isn't uh, appropriate, you no, know, because I was talking about dating and everything else like that, which I completely understand. You know, as a government official, you sh you really don't want to be out in the media like that. I completely understand. That's why they don't want you on social media and everything else like that. So uh, I had a choice to make, guys. And they said, hey, put your stuff on hold. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let, let, let's play this out a little bit and see what happens. And um, and I said, no, I can't do that. Because at the time, me and Fresh had just invested in the studio. We literally just started because uh, we had gotten into the studio in October. They called me in in like like November. Like a month later, they called me in for this, uh, you know, that they to talk to me about this stuff. 
And I had to a decision to make. And I had a, a, my YouTube guy was coming down from Chicago. He was moving down here. Shout out to Tom. And Chris was starting to put in more hours with us. So I was like, bro, I got a lot of people uh, that, that need me. I'm not going to just turn my back on them. you know. And, and it was scary, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. It was really, really scary because I was working a, a secure six-figure job that I enjoyed. I loved. You know, I didn't want to leave. Like, I definitely didn't want to leave. And, you know, I, me being selfish and staying with the agency and leaving everybody else out to dry was just something I couldn't do. I just couldn't fucking do it, bro. We had invested too much in the studio. Guys were counting on me. I made a promise to Fresh that he was going to quit his job and I was going to help him quit his job because he hated his daytime job, bro. He hated that shit. And, you know, and Chris, you know, uh, Chris was relying on us. So I was like, damn. So I quit. I, I resigned, man. I, I, and I'm not going to lie to you guys. I resigned December 4th. I'll never forget. I walked into the office. Uh, I turned in my my badge. I turned in my creds. I turned in my body armor. I turned in my radio, all my equipment, man. And, and that just sucked, bro. Uh, it, it sucked because I truly did um, enjoy that job. Um, but yeah, so I resigned. And um, and then we started the YouTube channel. We started to blow up. You know, obviously when you blow up, right, haters are going to come. Haters came. They doxed me thinking I was going to be embarrassed of it or some shit. The only reason I didn't bring it up, guys, was because I was intending once we hit you know, our goal, a million subs, and, you know, I was going to cut back the shows a bit and then see if I could potentially go back. But I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> and the thing that sucks, too, is that um, I had just got my clearance uh, done. Like, I had just went through my second background check. Every Guys, every five years when you have a clearance, you get a background check. And I had just got cleared, bro. And I was, I was like, thank God, you know, because my parents are from Sudan, right? So when you're from certain places in the world, it takes a little bit longer to clear, if you know what I'm saying, right? So uh, and I'm Muslim and all this other stuff. So I get it. You know, they got to do their due diligence, make sure I'm not some plant or whatever. And, uh, yeah, that's what ended up happening. So I got cleared. And then next thing you know, I had to resign and it is what it is. You know, you know, I'm doing great now. You know, our, the channel is being super successful. We went through some bullshit, whatever, but Hey, what's life without a little bit of adversity and, uh, you know, fresh and Chris are doing well, you know, better than ever before I'm doing great. And, you know, it sucks, but, you know, fuck it. I'm just going to share this knowledge with you guys, educate you guys a little bit about how um, law enforcement works. And that is my experience. So so you guys know, now you guys saw my career trajectory. Now you're probably wondering, well, Myron, what the hell did you actually do? What did you do, motherfucker? So my career, what I did, guys, I specialized in uh, the cases that I did mostly were human smuggling and drug trafficking. Those are like two crimes that I'm, that's my fuck, that's my butter. You know, that's my, that's my, uh. That's my sauce, okay? Um, I was a very good agent, very strong agent. I did a lot of big cases. I've done Title Three intercepts, which is basically listening to phones. I've written hundreds of affidavits to arrest people. I've done. Uh, I've been to grand jury and testified a million times. I've done big cases. Uh, I've done uh, RICO cases. I've done uh, organized crime, crime drug enforcement task force case, cases, aka OSADF uh, cases. I've done um, big gang cases. I've done or sophisticated organized crime. I've done Mexican cartel investigations. I did that for a long ass time. And just so y'all know, here's the receipts, okay? A lot of people talking smack. Oh, you, do you did you really do it? Here's an award I got, guys, okay? Uh, in 2019, all right, it was, this is the um, the director's award, okay? Um, for, uh, in 20, I got it in 2020, but the award was for 2019 for extraordinary uh, achievement, strong leadership, and dedicated teamwork in executing the ICE law enforcement mission. And like I said before, guys, I worked for HSI, not not um, ERO. So even though I did have immigration authority, I didn't. I used it only in the pursuit of like you know furthering your case, right? So, um, but I did a lot of drug trafficking and human smuggling cases was my specialty, and I did a lot of firearms cases too, violent crime as well. So, uh, and this was for a case I did um, back in 2019. It was an undercover case I did. I, I wasn't the undercover. I had undercover agents working, doing the case for me, but I was the case agent. And as a case agent, guys, you're the one that runs the case, right? So, um, so yeah, you know, it was it's a really prestigious award. I was really excited to get it. Uh, and that case is the reason why I got white hair, guys. Um, but I'll talk about that maybe another day. But, uh, but yeah, I, so I've done a lot, guys, as, as, a, as an agent. I, I remember um, pretty much almost every year, that I was an agent in my field office, I wrote the most reports, or we call them ROIs. And, um, you know, I, quite frankly, if you're writing ROIs, you're working. Like, that's that's one of the best ways to tell if an agent is actually doing anything. Are you writing reports? If you're not writing reports, you ain't doing shit. You know what I'm saying? Everything you do, whether it's surveillance, you're doing a trash run, you're doing whatever you do, you should be do documenting it and writing reports, right? So 
I had a very good relationship with the prosecutor's office. They they loved me because I brought them good cases. Um, I you know my office loved me because I you know I was a go getter. You know I always was big on doing proactive cases, and and I'll break down the differences between proactive and reactive cases for y'all as well. But um, but yeah, man. Um, so yeah, you guys wonder like how I lose my hair follicles and the gray hairs where to come from? It came from the feds, man. It came from doing those jobs, uh, from doing that job. It was a very stressful job, but it was a rewarding career, awesome career. I got nothing bad to say, and hopefully I can share some of that with you guys. So. We're going to start. So now that you guys know, so we covered, you know, how we got here, right? Like people doxing me and then me having to tell y'all what the truth is. Uh, we talked about my my background, right? Like uh, from 2010 to 2020, how I, you know, employed by the agency. We talked about DJ Academics, how I did that show on Spotify with him. And y'all just loved it and said, well, you need a channel. And we're here now, right? And I gave you guys my background training experience. So you guys know, uh, you know, that I'm qualified to talk about this, you know, beyond qualified. I've done more than most, you know, special agents, I don't care what agency you work for. I've, I've probably arrested more people and done more cases than them. I'm not even trying to be cocky, but I'm telling you guys, when you start off in an office like Laredo, Texas, we were out every day, every day doing surveillance, arresting someone, reacting to cases. It was crazy, bro. It was, it was fantastic. I got my feet wet and yeah. Anyway, so what's the next thing here? I wrote a little outline for you guys so that we can keep this organized. So, um, so we're going to go over, now that you guys know my background, we're going to go over um, okay, disclaimer, real quick. I want to say this out here now that you guys know what I do. I'm not going to be talking about anything classified. All right, guys, I'm not doing that. All right. Uh, number one, that'll get everyone in trouble. And then number two, I didn't do classified case. I didn't, I didn't deal with classified material because just so y'all know, classified sounds all sexy and shit like that. It's not, you can't do anything with it in a criminal case. All right. Because classified material is, is, is not discoverable. And, and discovery guys is basically when, you know, when you arrest someone and you have the evidence against them. Uh, well, guess what? You got to turn that over to their defense attorney so their defense attorney can look at your evidence and see what you actually gathered. So we ain't going to talk about nothing classified. I stayed away from classified stuff. It, it sounds good on paper, but it's a pain in the ass to deal with. So no, that's one thing. And then I'm going to talk about cases that I participated in, guys, but some of these cases may still be active. So I'm going to change names and not give you guys all the facts, obviously, to protect the integrity of those cases, obviously. You know, I, obviously, I separated from the government, but I'm not an idiot and I'm not going to compromise anything. I'm just, this is all for your guys' educational benefit. And on top of that, everything I'm going to talk about is public information. So if I do talk to you guys about a case, it's closed. All right. I'm not going to talk about any open cases. I'm not going to talk about. Uh, anything that might compromise anyone's safety or ability to do their job. And I'm definitely not going to touch on anything classified. All right. So don't ask. All right. Uh, <laughs> so and, and the classified stuff, like I said before, it's a pain in the ass anyway. No one that does real, a lot of criminal cases wants to even touch classified stuff because once you do it, it messes everything up. And I can give you all a story about that later on, about like why I, I stayed away from that shit. But um, OK, so we went over that. So. All right. Cool. So what is a law enforcement officer? OK. A law enforcement officer, guys, simply put, is, you know, someone that takes an oath, you know, sworn in uh, to uphold the law, right? Whether it's a state law, federal law, county law, whatever it is, that is what a law enforcement officer is, okay? Whether you're state, federal, etc., it does not matter. You are, if you're a sworn, if you have arrest authority, you're a law enforcement officer, okay? Whether you're an FBI agent, a sheriff's deputy, a police officer for New York, uh, NYPD, a detective, whatever it is, you, you know, you carry a gun and a badge, you're a Leo. Okay. We call it Leo. That's the acronym. Law enforcement officer is Leo. And I'm going to break all these terms down for you guys so that in subsequent episodes, you'll guys know what I'm be, I'll be talking about. Okay. So I don't have to break it down too much. So let me look at the chat real fast. Um, let's see here. Make sure everybody is catching. Uh, yes, guys, I will be doing collabs with, uh, with academics, uh, Bruce rivers, trap lore Ross. He's coming in January actually. Uh, so yeah, long, long it be up. Yeah, classified as a pain in the ass, no matter what. Oh, and I will break down the difference between CIA guys and FBI as well, and like you know, or NSA. Uh, just so you guys know, there's a difference. Uh, CIA and NSA are not law enforcement agencies; they are intelligence agencies, guys. So it's not the same. Uh, okay, how is pay as an intern at the academy? Okay, so pay. Uh, okay, I'll break this down real quick. We'll pay, and then we'll get into um, the Fourth Amendment and everything else like that. All right, pay. Um, as a Fed, guys, you can easily make uh, six figures after four to five years, right? You'll be making in the low six figures because Feds, they get paid on a GS scale, okay? And on the GS scale, you go from uh, typically they're going to hire you a bare minimum I've seen is like a five, seven, or nine, GS five, seven, or nine, or they might pay you on the GL scale. But once you pass 11, it's GS, right? Or general scale. And then for most special agents, journeyman, which journeyman means like the what you top out at, is a 13. That's going to put you at about 
80 to 90 grand base salary. Now, here's the thing with the feds, okay? The feds guys get something called LEAP, Law Enforcement Availability Pay, all right? And what that means is you get 25% of your base salary put on, uh, sorry, you get put onto your base salary. So for example, let's say you make for purposes of easy math, let's say you make 50 grand a year base salary, all right? Well, 25% of uh, 50,000 is what, 12.5? So that means you're gonna get 62.5 per year. That's built in. So, and then they're gonna want you to work 50 hours per week, all right? That's assuming you work 10, 10 hours every day, five days a week, 50 hours per week, right? Now, here's the problem. <laughs> and this is why feds don't do overtime, or there's really no such thing as overtime. Whether you work 50 hours or 100 hours, you're gonna get that same salary. That base salary with that 25%, AKA leap, that's it. You don't get overtime, okay? There's very few agencies that actually get overtime. The only agency that I know that get overtime regularly are Secret Service and Diplomatic Security Service, which we'll break that down as well. And the reason why is because those guys do protection details. When you do protection detail, you work longer hours, you get hazard pay, you're traveling in dangerous places, all these other things, right? Which is a whole other shebang. And then, man, I, I didn't even think, think about that, talking to y'all about hazard pay and traveling. Okay, but that's a whole other, like we could do that on a, <laughs> another day. Um, but that's that's how the feds typically get paid. So I started off as a GS4 as an intern. Once I became an agent, I went to a seven. And then when I left, I was like a GS13 too. All right. So I was making about right before I left, I was making around 120 a year on paper. All right. Cool. So let's move on. So we talked about what a law enforcement officer is, right? Now let's talk about the Fourth Amendment, guys. All right. So uh and the Fourth Amendment, guys, is basically uh searches and seizures, okay? And I'm gonna actually pull this up for you guys here and because this is very important um and some of you guys are international so you might not know this but basically the constitution of the united states right 1789 the right of the people to be secure in their persons houses papers and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particular describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized so in other words guys when anytime there's a reasonable expectation of privacy the government needs to get a search warrant to look through your stuff, okay? Um, and only upon probable cause will they get that search warrant to search your stuff or to arrest you. Probable cause is the threshold in the United States to affect an arrest, all right? Now, I know what some of y'all are going to say, but the FBI, they've listened in on phones and all this, and then it's saying, oh, no, 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 no. All right, guys, when we're talking about national security, the rules change, okay? <laughs> uh, national security, there's a whole other, there's FISA courts for that. There's a whole other shebang, okay? That does not apply. We're talking about criminal cases here. We ain't talking about classified crap. We're not going to be talking about NSA and CIA today. Uh, maybe I'll break that down for you guys another time, the differences. But um, when it comes to uh, criminal cases, the Fourth Amendment is going to be something that's always going to need to be uh, of, uh, there, okay? So uh, so what is so um, what is an indictment, okay? So an indictment, guys, is basically a formal charge typically issued from a grand jury, okay? And uh, so for you to get, um, for you know, and it's for typically for felonies, right? So, and I'll read it for you guys from Wikipedia. That's my knowledge of it, but I'll read it for you guys, the, the, the formal answer. It goes, uh, a formal charge or accusation of a serious crime, okay, an indictment for conspiracy, for example. Uh, it's a criminal accusation that a person has committed a crime in jurisdictions that use the concept of felonies. The most serious criminal offense is a felony. Jurisdictions that do not use the felonies a, a concept often use that of an indictable offense, an offense that requires an indictment. So uh, it's just a fancy way of charging someone, guys. And typically you convene a grand jury, whether it's state or federal. Federal and state do it a little bit differently. Uh, and you go in there, right, and you talk about your case. And after you talk about your case, um, your prosecutor's there with you. you. You testify, hey, on this day, you know, such and such, this happened. These are this is my evidence. Blah blah blah. And remember, guys, you're just trying to you're just establishing probable cause. You're not revealing all the facts of your case. You're just revealing things pertinent to establish probable cause. That's very important. You don't need to disclose everything. You just disclose enough to arrest someone. So you go in there, you present your case. The the grand jury deliberates, and then they return a true bill of indictment, and then bang, you get an arrest warrant from the from the judge, and then you go pick up your guy, right? Um, and I know what they say. Hey, well, you can indict a ham sandwich. The reason why. And let me break that down, why that phrase exists and why it's kind of stupid to say that. So it is true that you can indict a ham sandwich because if you're going, but the reason why you can indict a ham sandwich is this, simply this, especially when it's federal, guys. By the time you've been indicted, that prosecutor 
At the federal level, a.k.a. an AUSA, Assistant United States Attorney, not to be confused with the ADA, Assistant District Attorney, has enough to go to trial. Like, I'm going to say that one more time for y'all. Hold on, sound effect time. <laughs> the reason why they say you can indict a ham sandwich is because by the time you're actually in there in that grand jury room with your AUSA and you guys are indicting, your AUSA, right, on the federal level, is ready to go to trial. Prosecutors, guys, especially federal prosecutors, do not take cases unless they're going to win. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later on. Okay? And like the video, by the way, guys, so I can hit those watch hours and we can do this uh, once a week for y'all. And I'm going to be putting out clips as well. So now we know what an indictment is, right? Once you get indicted, what get, comes next? The arrest, right? So an arrest is basically when, you know, law enforcement officer basically takes your right to freedom away, puts the handcuffs on you, puts you in jail, and now you're going to start the court process, right? Now, what's an informant? Okay, so <laughs> we could break this down in real detail, but okay, so guys, an informant is someone basically that provides information to a law enforcement officer on criminal activities, okay? Now, you got different types. You got cooperating witnesses, you got confidential informants, and you got sources of information, okay? Now, every agency calls it different things, but those are the three main breakdowns, and I'll tell you guys the differences. So a source of information is just someone that might call you and give you information. They're not documented. They just give you information. It is what it is. You might act on it. You might not. They might connect some dots here or there, but they're just a source of information, a.k.a. SOI. And like I told you before, different agencies call it different things. Then you got a cooperating witness. A cooperating witness, nine out of ten times, is someone that has already been charged and or is facing a charge or has something hanging over their head, and they're cooperating with the government to either reduce their time or not get time. Okay? That's a cooperating witness. Then you got confidential informant. An informant, nine out of 10 times, is actually on the payroll, is getting paid, has like a CI number, and is a documented source, okay? Those are the three types of people that provide information. So not all sources are on paper, okay? Yeah, 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 y'all get some, some sauce right now, bro. So um, yeah, guys, like the video. Like the video, please. Do me a favor, like the video. You know, get them up because I've never seen anyone break this stuff down to this level. And and the reason why I know this is because I controlled all three. I have informant. I had informants, right, that I was paying money to. I had source of information that would just call me because they want to be good Samaritans. And then I had cooperating witnesses, like dudes that were uh, cooperating because they didn't want to do do a lot of time. You know what I'm saying? Or they were facing charges, or or even yet. And we know we can add a fourth one. I had sources that were like illegal aliens that if they didn't cooperate with me, they were going to get deported. So I, I filed immigration paperwork to keep them in the country to, 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 you know, to build a case, which was a special authority that only we can do because uh, HSI has immigration authority as well. So I was, uh, I was doing that. I had, I had sources that like, you know, had some issues with their um, immigration status and, you know, I would give them paperwork so that they could stay in the United States and help me with the case, you know, or maybe they're a, a witness or whatever. Uh, no, CI number is not a criminal investigation number. It is a CI number, aka confidential informant. Confidential informant. So they they save that. Uh, like I said, every every agency is different when it comes to informants, but uh, it pretty much they call them a CI or a confidential source is one, typically the two two ways they refer to it. Okay. And again, everything I'm telling y'all is is on the internet. Okay. I'm just con condensing it and putting it for you guys in one nice area from a reputable source, aka me. Nothing I'm telling you guys is is secret or classified. None of that shit. This is all public information. I'm just, you know, putting it all for you guys in a nice, tight little bow, right? All right. So we talked about what informants are. So what are the differences between Fed and state? All right. So, uh, so guys, federal crimes typically affect interstate commerce, okay, or have some kind of uh, special statute associated to them. And then state is typically crimes that affect the state, right? And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the major federal agencies for you guys and clear up some... Uh, some issues or sort of questions. So, all right, let me go through these these uh, chats real quick. Make sure nobody has any questions or anything like that. And then I'm going to start breaking down each agency for you guys. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. And shout out to all you guys in here, bro. We got almost 400 y'all in here, man. Love all you guys. You know what I'm saying? Giving y'all that sauce. Uh, uh, it says, basically, if you ain't a foreign national, you can't be wiretapped without probable cause or serious evidence. Yeah, you can't be wiretapped at all, bro, without um without probable cause. You know, unless you're like doing some other bullshit like that affects national security, then you know, that's a whole other game. Uh let's see here. 
Yeah, so yeah, and then there's, uh, yeah, guys, AUSAs are assistant United States attorneys. Those are federal prosecutors. And then you got ADAs, which are assistant district attorneys, okay? So those are the differences. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm just looking, making sure that you, I didn't, like, leave any of you guys confused because we've already went through a lot of information here. Uh, okay. All right. Who has more power, federal state? Okay, good question. Who has more power, federal state? Um, and this is from uh, Haitian Jack. Y'all want to know the truth, bro? The people that really have the most power are the states that are deputized as task force officers, and we'll break that down a little bit. But um, they have power in their own right. You know, this whole bullshit that you guys see in the movie where, like, the feds come in and tell the, the, the local police, hey, step off, this is our case. That's bullshit, bro. If you actually tried that, they would tell you, get the fuck out of my station. They, they would not mess with you. They'd be like, get out of my station. We are not messing with you. Like, the state and, the state and locals have a lot of power, guys. Okay? So all that stuff is, is really capped. Uh, okay. So let me, uh, all right. So let's start breaking down the agencies. Okay. So let me share my screen real quick. I'm Chris today, guys. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay. So this is the agency I used to work for guys. I think y'all can see this right here. This is uh immigration customs enforcement. Just like I told y'all before, they got two components. They got HSI special agent, right? And then they got ice, right? Uh, immigration customs enforcement, right? So, uh, this is um these are the two different sister agencies that are um you know under the umbrella of ICE, all right? And like I told y'all before, they they uh the ICE mission is executed through the enforcement of more than 400 federal statutes and focused on customs violations, immigration enforcement, and preventing terrorism and combating the illegal movement of people and goods. ICE has two primary uh, and distinct law enforcement components, home namely HSI and ERO, which we talked about earlier. Um and then uh you know, and then obviously they have a lot of uh authorities. But which I broke that down for you guys. But we already know about HSI because I gave you guys a little bit of background, so we'll stop that one. Next are the enemies, aka. <laughs> uh, you guys, you guys know these guys. I'm gonna pull them up right now. Let's see here where they at. Um, da -da 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 -da. Okay, here we go. Feeble, no, famous but incompetent, aka your boys over there at the bureau, the FBI. So, um, okay. So, um, and I'm, what I'm doing, guys, is I'm going to go over the main federal agencies, all right? You got the FBI, you got HSI, you got ATF, you got DEA, um, and you got uh, Office of Inspector General. Um, but these are the main agency guys that, like, do most of the criminal cases in the United States. Uh, so th these are the main agencies that, like, are doing the most arrests. They're the biggest agencies, right? So the FBI is the mist it's a domestic intelligence and security service of the United States, and it's principal law. It's the principal law federal law enforcement agency, Okay. Uh, operates under the DOJ. So just so y'all know, right, there's different departments, right? You got the Department of Justice, then you got the Department of Homeland Security. Department of Homeland Security is a whole other thing, okay? So, for example, like me, when I was working for HSI, I was under DHS. FBI agents are under DOJ, all right? And so is ATF agents and DEA. They're all under Department of Justice. Um, so... Uh, a leading U.S. counterterrorism, counterintelligence, and criminal investigative organization, the FBI has jurisdiction over more violations of, of over two of over violations of more than 200 categories of federal crimes. So remember how I told you guys HSI has more broader authority. We have 400. They have 200, right? Uh, and basically, the, the, their functions are unique. Its activities in support of national security and are comparable to those of the British M15 or Russian FSB. Um, but unlike the CIA, which has no law enforcement authority and is focused on intelligence collection abroad, the FBI is primarily a domestic agency. Maintaining 56 field offices in major cities. So the FBI is the biggest law enforcement agency, federal law enforcement agency, guys, in the United States. All right. So, uh, and I know you guys are going to want to ask me, hey, you know, have you ever worked with the FBI, whatever? Yes, I have. Uh, I know them. I know how they work very well. I was actually hired by them as well. Um, good agency, you know, but the thing is, is that they're extremely bureaucratic. Okay. You can't get shit done. Their uh their their focuses have changed over the years. Um, after 9/11, the September 11th attacks, they they were always a counterterrorism agency first. But after 9/11, they really focused into counterterrorism. So most of their funding and efforts goes towards counterterrorism, which you know rightfully so, it's one of the worst crimes. Um, and then after that is counter espionage, and then after that is public corruption. Uh, and public corruption, you know, when they're arresting dirty police officers, senators, all that other crap. So. Those are the FBI's main uh, functions. They don't do as many criminal cases as they used to, guys. Um, and that's because, like I told you before, they're focusing more on preventing terrorist attacks and counterintelligence, which a lot of the times you guys aren't even going to hear about on the news because once you're in that world, a lot of it is classified, et cetera, and they're more concerned with stopping things from happening than letting things happen and 
uh, going them after them. Okay. Uh, and what else uh, was I going to tell you all about the Bureau? So that's kind of how they shifted. You know, obviously there's a legacy. You know, they still do the bank robberies. They still do. Uh, they're the primary agency that does bank robberies. So if you rob a bank, you know, quite frankly, you're very stupid. And uh, you're probably going to go to jail. And it's a federal crime. Uh, they still do uh, organized crime. You know, they still do the mafia cases, the RICO cases, and everything else like that, of course. But um, they just don't do it as much as they used to. You know, they're, they're, their focuses have changed a lot since 9-11. All right. Next agency we're going to cover, okay, is, let's see here. We will cover the Dias, a.k.a. The DEA know these guys very well. I worked very closely with the DEA when I was working in, in uh, Laredo, Texas. These guys, the DEA and HSI fight with each other so much, guys, because, and I'll, well, I'll tell you guys that here in a second. But, okay, so the DEA is the United States Federal Law Enforcement Agency under the U.S. Department of Justice tasked with com combating drug trafficking and distribution within the United States. It is a lead agency for domestic enforcement of the Controlled Substance Act, uh, sharing concurrent jurisdiction with the FBI and U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, see? So they both have, and I'll break that down for you guys in a second, and U.S. Customs and Border Protection. DEA has sole responsibility for coordinating and pursuing U.S. drug investigations both domestically and abroad. All right, so this is where the problems arise with, uh, with DEA. So to enforce drug trafficking laws, guys, in the United States, you need something called Title 21, all right? And Title 21 is the authority to, uh, is the drug, the Controlled Substances Act, okay, in the United States, the federal code. And... Uh, there's a couple agencies that have Title 21. You guys just saw it. DEA, uh, DEA obviously is the main agency that gives it out. Then you got HSI that has it. You got FBI that has it. You got Customs and Border Protection that has it. And the reason why Customs and Border Protection has it because if you smuggle drugs in the United States, guess what? They got to seize it. They need Title 21 authority to be able to take it, right? Uh, and um, yeah, those are the main agencies. And ATF also has um, Title 21, right? Limited Title 21. So here's the problem. Everyone and their mom investigates drug trafficking. Okay, I told you already this when I was in Laredo, Texas. That's a big part of what I did, doing drug cases. So since everyone investigates drug trafficking, guess what happens? Okay, a lot of fighting. You know, I can't tell you guys how many times I would look at a target and I'd be like, all right, and you, you'd call the deconfliction center, right? Which is basically you make sure that your target isn't being looked at by other agencies. And I'd see like a million people looking at the same goddamn guy. And I'll call those people, hey, you know, I you know I heard you're looking at this guy. I'm looking at him too. Yeah, we got an open case. All right, cool. Uh, you guys want to meet up so we can like share information and work together, whatever. And you know, and and you would go right because you want to make sure that you're not stepping on toes. You want to make sure that your informant's not doing some bullshit on you, whatever it is. So you'll go, and I can't tell you guys how many times, bro. People would fight over cases. You know, they'd be there in a meeting. And there'd be like a DEA agent there, an FBI agent there. Then there'd be like a, a, a state and local over there, and then there'd be like an ICE guy there, and they'd all argue over targets. They'd fight because. Everyone wants to get the case. Everyone wants to be able to do the big sexy case and be able to lump the big conspiracy. Well, I'm looking at this guy. And he'd be like, well, I'm looking at this guy. And that's my, his cousin. And no, that's my fucking informant. Blah, blah, blah. And then they start fighting, bro. It's crazy. All right. And uh, that's what happens when, when, when you have overlapping authority. And drugs is probably one of the biggest reasons uh, that agencies argue with each other. I can't like me personally, when I was in Laredo, Texas, I got along with DEA. Great. They were fantastic. But a lot of my partners hated them, bro. They used to get in damn near fist fights over cases, bro. And uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of reasons for that, why the DEA is so bloodthirsty with cases. Um, one of them is because they can't necessarily hit their 13 without uh, getting to a certain level. And a 13 is the journeyman status, which breaks you into the six-figure realm. Uh, DEA has this stupid rule that you have to ha have like a big case and do a bunch of stuff on a checklist to be able to get to a, to a 13, which is, which is why they end up being so bloodthirsty for cases. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. Uh, but yeah, so that's the DEA, guys, all right? Um, they're actually a very small agency, just so y'all know. They, they're not big. They're, there's only like maybe a couple thousand of them in the United States. Um, most of DEA is actually built upon the fact, uh, the backs of task force officers. And while we're at it, let's talk about task force officers, right? And I mentioned this briefly uh, earlier. So task force officers, guys, are, um, are TFOs, are guys that are assigned to one agency but are deputized to enforce federal crimes as well. So an example of this would be, uh, let's say I work for Miami Police Department, right? I'm a detective in the narcotics unit. I'm also assigned to the DEA office as a task force officer, which means I have a DEA badge that's silver, right? That says task force officer on it. And I have federal authority and I still have my Miami Dade badge and I have my state authority. So I can not only enforce drug, tra drug, uh, drug laws in the state of Florida as a Florida peace officer, I can also enforce federal drug laws under the DEA. I can carry my gun 
outside the state or, or I can I can fly anywhere with my gun. I can travel interstate with my weapon, which, you know, police officers can do anyway. But like now I can inf I can go into other states and t states that I would never be able to go to as a Florida peace officer and uh, under the authority of a DEA because I am a task force officer. And this is why TFOs are so valuable, because not only can they put on a uniform and do a traffic stop for you, they can also do uh, investigative work. They can look at the st use state resources to help you guys out. They can bring state cases against a guy. Let's say you don't have enough to bring him on, on a federal charge. You can arrest him state. Use that uh, as leverage to get him to cooperate. So if having TFOs on your team is fantastic, which is why the DEA has so many task force officers. Okay, they're a very small agency, but most of their power, the, most of their uh, personnel actually comes from um, most of their oh. They're saying, uh, remove the drinking cups. I got y'all. It's just water, man. That's all it is, is water. Uh, and then, uh, yo, Christina, can you move move that cup over there too? Take that one off. Um, so anyway, so, uh, so yeah, so <clears throat> what was I saying here? Okay, so, uh, so yeah, that, so they're built upon the, uh, the, the, the task force officers, right? There's a lot of TFOs that work for them that, um, which is fantastic having task force officers. Now, next agency we're going to talk about here is going to be the uh, ATF, okay? Bureau of um, Alcohol, Tobacco, Farms, and Explosives, ATF, all right? It's a domestic law enforcement agency in the United States, uh, responsible for the investigation and prevention of federal offenses, including the unlawful use, manufacture, and possession of firearms, explosives, acts of arson, and bombings, and illegal trafficking and tax evasion of alcohol and tobacco products. The ATF also regulates via licensing the sale, possession, and transportation of firearms, ammunition, and explosives in interstate commerce. Okay. So, um, and, you know, it says here, many of the ATF's activities are uh, carried out in conjunction with task forces made up of state and local law enforcement officers, such as the Project Safe Neighborhoods. The ATF operates a unique fire research laboratory in Maryland where full-scale mock-ups of criminal arson can be reconstructed. Re reconstructed. And ATF, guys, is a very small agency. I think they have less than 1,000 agents in the country. They're also heavily reliant upon um, upon task force officers. Heavily reliant. Um but no, they're they're uh this is this is a um definitely I have a good friend of mine that was an ATF agent when I was working in Laredo, Texas. I worked with the ATF very closely. Okay. Um I know um I pretty much know how you know how their agency works like the back of my hand, uh, because I worked so closely with them. One of my best friends, the ATF agent, we did a bunch of cases together. I used to see that motherfucker every day. Uh we would be doing surveillance together and you know, uh you know, fantastic agency. Um, as much as people want to talk smack about the Fast and the Furious, we could talk about that maybe another day. That's a whole other controversy. But uh, yeah, guys, do me a quick favor. We got uh, all 455 of you guys in here. Like the video, bro. Do me a favor because we we uh, we 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 giving fire right now. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody breaking this stuff down to the level that I'm breaking it down. All right. So uh, okay. So we just went over the major federal agencies that do criminal investigations. All right. I know what you guys are saying. What about Secret Service? What about all these other agencies? Secret Service is not really a criminal investigation agency, guys. They are a protection agency. So is the Diplomatic Security Service. They are more like a protection agency, which we could do an episode on protection agencies as well in the future. But that's why I didn't put them on this list because you rarely see them in court. You know what I'm saying? They don't really do criminal cases like that. All right? And then lastly, we'll talk, just because we, we might as well do this, let's talk about Office of Inspector General. This is an agency that typical... Pip, stuttering like fresh over here an agency that typically people do not uh know about and oig's guys aka office of inspector general basically they oversee federal agencies okay aimed at preventing inefficient or unlawful operations within their parent agencies such as offices attached to many federal executive departments independent federal agencies as well as state and local governments so for example let's say you know you got a, a border patrol agent that's doing some stupid shit right and he um and he's basically you know uh smuggling drugs right? He's using his, his badge and he's sneak, sneaking drugs across the border, right? Well, what's going to happen is more than likely uh, the FBI is going to come in and do the case, right? Because that's public corruption and the Office of Inspector General DHS. Because since Border Patrol is under Department of Homeland Security, OIG gets exclusive uh, jurisdiction to do that case. And most of the time they're going to marry up with an FBI agent and then do the case together. 
um, because the FBI isn't going to have certain accesses to maybe that guy's employment records, etc. cetera. Um, and I actually arrested a Border Patrol agent myself uh, a couple years back, which I'll tell you guys that story uh, one day. But that's a whole other... Yeah, I got stories for days, guys. But um, and this isn't to pick on Border Patrol. I love Border Patrol. Shout out to them, man. Another fantastic agency to work with. I worked with them extensively, but I'm just using them as an example. So, um, so that's how an Office of Inspector General would come in. They do criminal cases and oversee other agencies within their parents. So you got Office of Inspector Department of Justice, you got Office of Inspector De Department of Homeland Security, you got Office of Inspector Department of De Defense. So you got all these different OIGs that investigate people in the agency, okay? So uh okay, let me look at um uh let me look at the chat real quick before we get into uh the state and local breakdown, all right? Uh let's see here. Uh how dare you? <laughs> let's see here. <laughs> Ask Tiggle Biddy's fat booty. Okay. Horny niggas detected. Yeah, facts, bro. Yeah, yeah. I knew I knew that was gonna happen, bro. You guys. Horny nigga detected. <laughs> Horny nigga detected. Uh, uh let's see here. Just looking through here, making sure I don't miss any good questions. Some of you guys were asking some good questions in here. Uh Fedic question. How does a case start? Do, do FBI, HSI just investigate XYZ or do you need some sort of probable cause to start a case? No, you do not. You can start a case basically out of nowhere. You get some credible information, you can open a case. FBI is different. To open a case, FBI, you need like, uh, you need like, uh, see, this is why I told y'all before, like the FBI has a bunch of red tape to do their, get their jobs done. You need to um, get like uh, a supervisor to approve you to open a case, which I think is fucking crazy. But yeah, um, but with HSI, you, you, you get some information, you can open a case right there. Uh, let's see here. Myron about NSA. That is intelligence agencies, guys. That's an intelligence agency. They are not a law enforcement agency. Uh, I might do a, a episode for you guys on intelligence agencies and the differences. Uh, NCIS. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's let's break this down too. Uh, okay. So NCIS, Army CID, or AKA. Or so you got what NCIS stands for, guys? Is Na Naval Criminal Investigation Service. Okay. NCIS. Then you got. Army CID, Army Criminal Investigation Div Division, and then you got uh, OSI, Office of Special Investigation, I think is what it stands for, which is for the Air Force, and then you got, okay, Army, Naval, which covers the Marines and the Navy, and then you got OSI. Okay, I think though, yeah, did I miss anything? I, okay, so, um, oh, and then you got CEGIS, Coast Guard Investigative Service, okay? And these are all military enforcement uh, military criminal investigation agencies and what that basically means is let's say i'm on a barrack and i'm doing a bunch of stupid shit i'm selling drugs out of my barrack right and i'm and i'm a uh a, a marine right shout out to all the marines out there and thank you for your service but let's say hypothetically i'm a marine and i'm selling drugs out of my barrack well now ncis finds out they're going to open a criminal case against me and not only that they're going to get me on the criminal side right for distributing drugs on a military base and then on top of that, they're going to get me for the UCMJ, right? Which is the, uh, fuck, what does that stand for? Sorry, guys, I'm a little rusty here. Uh, UCMJ, I think the United Cr Criminal, uh, it's the uh, Uniform Code of Military Justice. Bam, there you go, right? And that is a whole other world, be world because they can get you on like, basically it's kind of like, think of it as like admin, but not really. And it's way easier for them to like, get you get you found guilty and you know you can get a dishonorable discharge or whatever it is but basically ncis army cid sieges and um uh, osi conduct investigations that involve military personnel so uh good good point there uh good good uh good question um so because i remember i had a case on a guy that was former navy and i needed to get his record so i contacted uh ncis to get his 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 um uh his um his dishonorable discharge stuff because the guy got caught with a gun. Okay, so I remember this case was like back in like 2015. Uh, I was looking at a guy. He got caught with a firearm and he wasn't a convicted felon, but he had gotten a dishonorable discharge from the military, which for you guys that don't know, a dishonorable discharge is when they basically kick you out the military dishonorably, okay, which is terrible. It's like worse than being a convicted felon. So he gets kicked out. Now, to charge someone with you know, being a prohibited person, right? 18 USC 922, right? Which is basically prohibited persons from having firearms. You get, there's a, nine different ones that you can fall into, whether you're a felon, dishonorable discharge, drug user, mentally insane, uh, you renounce your citizenship, and there's a couple other ones. Um, but this guy was got a dishonorable discharge. So to, in order to get him indicted, I needed to get 
his dishonorable discharge paperwork from the military, from the Navy. So I had to contact NCIS to get the paperwork uh, that showed he got dishonorable discharge because I would have to admit that into evidence to show that he is a prohibited person from having a firearm. Okay, uh, let's see here. What happens with the money that gets seized with the drugs? It gets put into the treasury fund, guys. Uh, depending on the agency that you work for, it gets put into into the. Uh, it goes back to the agency, and then you know, the government seizes it and goes to fund government activities. Man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Secret Service protect and just money laundry uh, or, or money laundering. I think is what you mean. Uh, no, Jose, they they do um they they do financial investigations, but to be honest with you, their biggest thing is counterfeit currency. That's their primary sauce. Is uh um and they also do a lot of credit card scamming. Um, even though they don't really have the time, but they, they, uh, they also do that. Uh, oh, okay. Someone said you USPIS. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, and guys, remember, I only mentioned ATF, FBI, DEA, and HSI because those are the main agencies that bring criminal cases, but these other agencies you guys are mentioning are honorable mentions. So USPIS, us postal inspection service, AKA postal inspectors. Um, yeah, they, they investigate crimes that involve the mail. Okay. The U S postal system. Uh, and yeah, I mean, postal inspectors are, you know, they could, they, they used to be really, really fucking crazy back in the day doing a lot of good cases and stuff like that, but people don't use the mail as much, man. So they're not as active as they used to be. I think there's only like a 1,000 U.S. postal inspectors in the United States right now. Um, but anytime you want to do like something called like a mail cover or whatever where you like want to look at someone's mail when they're coming in, you need to go through USPIS to get it or a postal inspector. Um, they also do uh, any anytime that drugs are smuggled through the mail. They used to do a lot of child pornography because before back the internet – uh, people used to smuggle child porn through the mail. So, uh, so yeah. Let's see here. Uh, misogyny. Okay. Uh, yep. See, okay. Let's see here. Texas Rangers. That is a state agency, guys. Um, and this comes from Ramon Branson. They're they're a state agency. They're not a federal agency. But I did get a chance to work with the Texas Rangers very closely when I was in Texas. I did a very big uh, organized crime case when I was there, and uh, I got to work with the Texas Ranger, and it was actually pretty funny because I'll never forget. Let's go down memory lane real quick with y'all. I'll tell y'all a funny story about the Texas Rangers. <laughs> so I, uh, so I, I, you know, I get to Laredo, Texas in 2014, right? And for some of you guys that don't know South Texas, it's a different world. I'm from Connecticut, guys. You know, I'm, I had just graduated college from Boston. I spent six months at home in Connecticut. It was cold as hell. And I go to Laredo, Texas, right? Right after. And I remember it was 2015. I started this case. It started off as an oil theft, uh, oil smuggling case, like with some, with some fraud. And I ended up meeting a Texas Ranger because the dude that he was looking at was a dude that I was looking at. And the dude, and because the guy was committing two different types of crimes, he was smuggling aliens, but he was sm stealing oil too, right? And for some of you guys that don't know, uh, South Texas produces a lot of oil, a lot of oil fracking areas in, in there, right? So, um, <laughs> So the ranger, I, we do, we meet. Remember how I told you guys, if you have a common target, you meet up and you kind of f share your information and just, you know go from there. So you try to work together. You know, I was always very uh, big with working with other agencies. You know, because you can't do everything yourself. You really can't. So, and I could break down why it's important to work with other agencies another another episode because that's a whole other thing. But uh, so I sit, I, I meet him up right, and he has the uh, you know I, I, I pull up right, like I'll get out the car, and then I, I see him. He's wearing a Big ass cowboy hat. He has the starch press shirt with the with the with you know when they have the the little uh, the not even a it's not I forget what it's called it's not a tie but it has like the two strings attached. Uh, he has these black denim jeans, freaking starch as hell with the crease on the side. Right, if you put them pants on against the wall, it would stand on its own. He has these big ass cowboy boots with the spurs on the back with the spinning with the spinning spurs. Uh, he has his uh, he has his leather belt with a big bu belt buckle in the middle, uh, with like a like a bull on it or something like that. Uh, leather le nice leather belt, very expensive you could tell. And then he had a a holster with a diamond like it had like a he had a 1911 a 1911 right. Uh, w w it was I think it was the 1911 FBI special, which is a very expensive gun, bro. We talking like two thousand dollars with like fucking diamonds on it and shit. And uh, he's like. How are you, Yankee? And it was like in his in his Texas voice. Like, How you doing, Yankee? Blah. And I'm like, oh shit. And like for me, I had never heard a Texas accent. So in the back of my head, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm there in my fucking Sperry's, you know, polo shirt with the stripes, you know, a Patagonia vest and and some Levi's jeans, bro. I'm New England to the max. You know, Patagonia hat. And this guy's over here with with the with the whole Southern getup. It was hilarious, bro. 
Uh, but yeah, we sat down and we ended up talking about the case. You know, I had to hold back the laughter from his accent, but I got used to it after a bit. And uh, yeah, we ended up working together, bro. It was it was awesome, man. Shout out to Texas Rangers. They're, they they uh, they're very. It's very difficult to become a Texas Ranger. There's only like. I think 50 to 100 of them in the entire state of Texas. They work alone a lot of the times. They do um, the big prolific cases in Texas, like capital murder cases, public corruption. Uh, and they are a part of the Department of Public Safety in the state of Texas. So shout out to them. Not to be confused with CID, which is Criminal Investigation Division, which has their own criminal investigators, but Texas Rangers uh, do their own thing. And you can't be a Texas Ranger unless you're born in the state of Texas. So I can never become a Texas Ranger. You know, so anyway, that's a. Oh, yeah, that is the story about the Texas Rangers. Uh, okay, let's see here. I'm just making sure I'm not missing any good questions. Oh, U.S. Marshals uh, would be a sweet gig. Get to fly all the time. Hell no, it's not, bro. So let me tell y'all something real quick. Stop the show. The two agencies that everyone thinks, actually, three agencies that everyone thinks is, is great to work for, but they really suck, are the U.S. Marshals. Secret Service and the Federal Air Marshal Service, or FAMS, okay, Air Marshals. Those three jobs suck balls, guys, because flying all day, right? We used to call them, we used to make fun of the FAMS. Uh, we used to call them food and movies because that's all you do is watch food, eat food and watch movies while you're on the fucking plane, bro. <laughs> and then um, and then other thing, too, is that, yo, if you're a federal agent, you fly armed anyway. So you, you're, you're basically a FAM when you get on the plane. You know what I'm saying? So it's like there's not that many of them. They were big after 9-11, but like now, you know, there's not many of them and it's a sucky job, bro. You don't want to be a fam. Uh, and then Secret Service, uh, you can make a lot of money as a Secret Service agent. Like I told you guys before, they do overtime. One of the few agencies that does overtime, but bro, it is a miserable job, bro. You're doing protection. You're staying outside of a garbage can for like 10 hours. You know what I'm saying? Making sure that all the routes are safe. It sucks, bro. I've done protection details before with the Secret Service. That shit is not fun. And then you got to wear a suit. Like, nah, man, I'm all good with that. And then, uh, and then the U.S. Marshals, that sucks because most of the time they do uh they don't do like they don't chase fugitives like everyone says in the movies bro most of them are stuck in the courts the, like you know sitting in the courtroom in a in a fucking suit bored as hell like okay or they're running around and freaking uh moving prisoners around because the marshals control the jail system before they get into the Bureau of Prisons. So if you get arrested by the feds, right? You, let's say you get arrested by the feds. FBI comes and picks you up. They pick you up. They, they arrest you. They bring you over to the U.S. Marshals. U.S. Marshals actually jail you, feed you, transport you around to your court dates, etc. It's not until you get convicted, right, and judged by the, by the a district judge that you finally go to the Bureau of Prisons. That's when the marshals relinquish you to the Bureau of Prisons and you actually serve your time. But the whole time you're fighting your case, you're locked up pending uh, your your case, you're dealing with the marshals. So the marshals are basically jailers, bro. They're federal, they're, they're federal jailers, which sucks. Okay. Uh, air marshals work for uh, uh, the Federal Air Marshal Service. I think it's under the FAA. Let me double check, make sure I got y'all information. Um, federal... Air Marshals, I'm going to make sure for you guys, Federal Air Marshal, they work under, oh, TSA, okay, they work under TSA, let's see here, okay, guys, do me a quick favor, man, like the goddamn video, oh, man, you guys are asking a lot of questions, what are we at, how many, li how many likes we at right now, I think we're at almost, damn, almost 700, okay, shout out to my ninjas, thank you guys so much, all right, so, before I get sidetracked here, Okay, now we're going to break down state and locals, all right? So, first, we're going to start with the sheriffs, okay? So, um, I never worked with the Scotland Yard. Though I have worked with, with foreign law enforcement. I worked with TCI police, Royal Police, and I also worked extensively with RCMP and CBSA. Shout out to Canada. Um, I might tell you guys about how I work with them in the future about some of my cases that I did. But okay, so we're going to talk about sheriff's offices in, in the United States, all right? United States, a sheriff is an official or, a, sorry, in a, is an official in a county or independent city responsible for keeping the peace and enforcing the law. Unlike most officials in law enforcement in the United States, sheriffs are usually elected, although some states have laws requiring certain law enforcement qualifications of candidates. Elected sheriffs are accountable directly to the citizens of their county, the constitution of their state, and ultimately the United States Constitution. 
The responsibilities of sheriffs and their agencies vary considerably by county. Many sheriffs have the role of police chief, though some lead agencies with limited law enforcement duties. Sheriffs are also often responsible for managing county jails and security at local government buildings. Okay, so, so guys, sheriffs basically, man, so in the south, sheriff's offices are big, okay, because you have more rural land. Uh, you obviously you, a city police department can't enforce laws all all across that land. So you got deputies, you got sheriff's offices that cover a wide range of land, right? And uh, so you got the sheriff, right? Who's the premier? Not premier. He's the main law enforcement officer in that county, and then he has something called sheriff's deputies who all work under him in the department. Okay, and they are basically delegated authority from him to enforce state laws. Okay, sheriff's deputies enforce state laws, not federal. They're they're state officers. Okay, and um, yeah, that's how sheriff's offices work for the most part. Um, and then also the sheriff is like the primary law enforcement officer in the county and he could pretty much i mean in texas i don't know about other states but i know in texas a sheriff is is extremely powerful he can like get rid of you for no reason if you work for his department okay so that is sheriffs of the united states next we're going to talk about municipal police okay these are state uh th these are also state police officers but they're they, typically they work for a city okay so let me share this screen with y'all municipal police so you got municipal police are law enforcement agencies that are under the control of local government. This includes the municipal police, uh, the municipal go government, where it is the smallest administrative the subdivision. They receive funding from the city budget and may have fewer legal powers than the state paid police. These police forces usually report to a mayor or a local police board. So this is like, you know, NYPD, you know, Miami Police Department, etc. Like, like typically city police all right, or town police. That is your local guys. Like if you live in a small town, right? I grew up in New Britain, Connecticut. You know, I speed. You know, and they pull me over. I get pulled over by a New Brand Police Department officer. He is uh, a part of a municipal police department. All right. And then you got your stateies, state police. Okay. If you live in the United States, obviously you guys know about these guys. Every time you're on a highway, they pull you over. They got that, you know, they come in with their pressed uniform. Uh, Sir, do you know, I don't know how fast you were going? Uh, Well, trooper, actually... I plead the fifth. I do not know how fast I was going. <laughs> Just kidding. But okay, in the United States, the state police is a police body unique to each U.S. state, having statewide authority to conduct law enforcement activities and criminal investigations. In general, state police officers known as state troopers perform functions that do not fall within the jurisdiction of the county sheriff, Vermont being a notable exception, such as enforcing traffic laws on state highways and interstate expressways, overseeing the security of the state capitol complex, protecting the government, governor, training new officers for local police forces, too small to operate an academy, and providing technological and scientific services, right? So, for example, um, let's say you are a small to police department. Let's say you're, uh, you know, Kendall, I mean, let's say you're a small police department, right, agency, and you don't have, you, you see some drugs from a guy. Well, you're not going to have a lab to test the drugs. You need to give it to the state police in your state to test the drugs. And as the feds, let's say the DEA lab, right? Let's say I see some drugs in the DEA lab uh, is backed up and they're not going to be able to like analyze my drugs in time and try time for trial. Uh, I'll give it to the state police, uh, you know, which in this case, when I was in Texas, I'll give it to Texas Department of Public Safety. They would they would uh, test the drugs for me and give me a positive reading and give me the purity and everything else like that. And the reason why that's important is because purity of the drug a lot of the times is going to dictate how much time the individual does. The more pure the drugs, the more time you do, okay? So, okay. So that's the state police, right? Uh, and then, so we talked about an indictment. Okay, so now we know the, the state police departments and, you know, we got the shit. So you got the feds. We broke down the feds, right? We talked about the FBI, DEA, um, HSI. You know, we talked about the military police departments, uh, you know what? For the feds, let's go back to the feds one more time. Let's talk about um, these guys because um, this is very important. All right. So we're going to talk about U.S. Customs and Border Protection as well because we might as well talk about them because they are the largest um, federal. If you're going to look at it like as like kind of like a police department, they're like the biggest federal uh, police agency, if you're going to say like uniform. So... Let me share the screen with y'all real quick, and I'll tell you guys about them. Okay. So you got U.S. Customs and Border Protection. CBP is the largest federal law enforcement agency in the United States Department of Homeland Security and is the country's primary border control organization. It is charged with regulating and facilitating international trade, collecting import duties, and enforcing U.S. regulations, including state customs and immigration. CBP is one of the largest law enforcement agencies in the United States. It has a workforce of more than 45,000 600 sworn federal agents and officers. It is headquartered in Washington, D.C. So, um, guys, so CBP, 
is going to be broken down into two main components. You got CBP, Office of um, uh, Field Operations, right, and then Border Patrol. So let's let's do this. U.S. Customs and Border Protection, OFO. Okay. Let's see here. God damn it! Where's Office of Field Operations, man? Blue uniform. Damn it. So when you guys go into the airport, they're the ones that um that like check you in. All right. God damn it, grooming standards. That's not what we're looking for. All right, let me stop sharing this. All right, let me do Border Patrol first while I find you guys the other one. All right. So Border Patrol is under. All right, Border Patrol is under US Customs and Border Protection. So let me pull this up for y'all real quick. All right, share screen. Shout out to all my ninjas in here late night with me. Sorry we started so late, guys. We had the uh we had Fulio in the house and some lovely ladies. All right. So this is the Border Patrol, guys. It's the United States Customs and Border Patrol's <laughs> US Customs and Border Protection's federal law enforcement arm within the United States, DHS. The USBP is armed and uniformed federal police that secure the borders of the United States by detecting and preventing illegal aliens, terrorists, and terrorist weapons from entering the United States and preventing illegal trafficking of people and contraband. So this is how I want you guys to look at it. When you come into an airport, right, you guys see the, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection guys in the blue uniforms, right? That is CBP OFO, Office of Field Operations. They're at the airports. They're at the bridges. They're at the main ports of entry, okay? So blue uniform means you're coming into the United States through a valid port of entry all right then you got border patrol who wear green uniforms all right they are located in areas where you should not be entering the united states okay like on the southwest border etc if you see a border patrol agent that means what are you doing you you're illegally about to enter the united states bro they're, and they're patrolling to make sure that you don't come in illegally all right so just to keep it nice and simple blue uniform at ports of entries aka poes whether it's a bridge that connects you to from the united states to mexico or an airport or you come in through a ferry they're going to be there to check you in, check your passport, make sure you're a U.S. citizen, or if you're not a U.S. citizen, make sure you have a green card or some kind of valid document to end the United States legally. And then the green uniforms are Border Patrol. They control, they um, you know, protect the border, especially on the southwest border, as well as the northern border. And if you try to come in illegally, that's not a port of entry, they're going to arrest you, okay? So uh, that I think that was very important to mention because they're uniformed. And then I want you guys to also understand, DHS, think of it as like a police department. You got... U.S. Customs and Border Protection and Border Patrol, right? Two different agencies, same umbrella, but two different missions. They're under DHS. Then you got, remember how I told you guys I used to work for HSI? They're, think of them as the detectives. They're the ones that do the criminal investigations. So an example of this would be, let's say a Border Patrol agent, right, catches you smuggling drugs into the United States or illegal aliens. They're going to call us. We're going to come in. We're going to interview the guy, right? that smuggled the contraband or the people into the United States, and then we're going to further the investigation. So they catch them, they call us, we follow up with the investigation, and then we take it from there. So that's kind of how CBP works with HSI. They're kind of the uniform presence, and then we do the investigation following. And then I know some people, are, well, people probably don't even know this, but you know, if, you, if Border Patrol catches drugs, they have a memorandum of understanding in the United States where they're going to give those drugs to DEA most of the time, unless HSI has a open investigation into that target or there's some kind of deconfliction, but they have an MOU that they're going to give the drugs to DEA. And the reason for that was be because um, before 9-11, the DHS did not exist. The Department of Homeland Security did not exist. It was Department of Justice. And Border Patrol used to be under Department of Justice, and they would turn their drugs over to DEA. As a matter of fact, a lot of uh, the drugs that are seized by DEA come from Border Patrol seizures because at the border, they're catching thousands of pounds of marijuana, thousands of kilos of drugs, uh, cocaine, heroin, whatever it is, Border Patrol catching a lot of it. But if it comes in through a port of entry, if it goes through like a bridge, gets caught at the airport, whatever it is, and CBP OFO gets it, blue uniform, remember, blue and green uniform, blue uniform gets it, HSI takes it, okay? So uh, someone said, how do they dispose of the drug safely though? Bang chow. Uh, they, they just burn it, they destroy it. They destroy it, and it, depending on the drugs, they, they destroy it um, in a, whatever way they need to. Um. So anyway, okay. So Mena uh, Singtor, a lot of there are many. Are there any investigation agencies that don't require a degree? Um, yeah, you, there's some federal agencies that don't require a degree, bro. But it's gonna be tough for you to get in without a degree. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, it's gonna be tough. Okay. So we talked about. Um, okay, we covered a lot here. So we covered uh, my background. We covered how this channel started from the trolls, right? Ended up working out for everyone's benefit. Um, we talked about. Um, 
disclaimers, right? Obviously, on this channel, we're not going to talk about anything classified. Everything I teach you guys is going to be public information. Uh, we talked about what is a law enforcement officer, a.k.a. Leo. Was, we talked about the Fourth Amendment. We talked about what is an indictment. We talked about what is an arrest. We talked about what is an informant. We talked about the difference between feds and state. I broke down the different federal agencies for, for you guys. We talked about HSI, FBI, DEA, ATF. Then we talked about the military agencies. Then we talked about the um, the uniform federal agencies, uh, Customs and Border Protection. Uh, we talked about the state and locals. Okay, now we're going to talk about um, courts, okay? So there's two different court systems, guys. You got your federal court system, and then you got your state court system, all right? Now, here's the main difference between the feds and the state. Oh, I'm just going to uh, all right, well, here we go. All right. The state takes almost anything, okay? Whether it's you getting, you know, tipsy in Miami Beach and getting arrested because you drank too much alcohol or you're driving on the highway lit on some weed and they arrest you for DUI or you murder someone, right? And then make a song about it and say murder on my mind. The state is going to take the case, all right? The state is going to take the case. Now, on the federal side, the feds are extremely picky, all right? Remember, there's assistant United States attorneys and then there is... Um, uh, ass assistant United States attorneys, which are AUSAs, and then you got assistant district attorneys, which are ADAs. Federal, state. AUSA federal, ADA state, okay? So the feds, you guys want to know why the feds don't lose? The reason why the feds don't lose is because the feds only take cases that they're going to win, okay? Most uh, AUSA offices in the United States have like a 95% plus win rate of trials, if they even go to fucking trial. Most of the time, they don't go to trial, right? So, like I told you before, the reason why we talk about, you know, getting indicted is like indicting a ham sandwich, especially the Fed system, is because by the time you go in there and you present all your facts, you have enough to go to trial. The Feds don't take a case unless it's airtight. The state, however, does not operate that way. The state, a lot of the times, is kind of a, uh, a kangaroo court, for lack of a better term, depending on the state. Um, you know, a lot of states allow you to film in there, which I think is crazy. You know, you look at like the Rittenhouse case, you look at the O.J. Simpson case, whatever. They let you film in there. They let them bring the camera and the media, which also, which already messes it up quite a bit. Um, you know, uh, a lot of um, defense attorneys that are in there are, are inexperienced, you know what I'm saying, with the state cases. Uh, you got ADAs who a lot of times are underpaid and overworked, right? Same with the, 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 um, the free counsel. And they're taking any case that comes in, guys. And here's the thing. When you're when you're a, a state officer, right, or you know whether you're a sheriff's deputy, uh, a police officer for a city, a state trooper, or whatever it is, you just arrest and ask questions later. Oh well, I smelled weed in your car. I caught, I found a little bit of marijuana in here. Or right, I'm going to arrest you and I'm going to put you in the jail, right? And then you write your criminal complaint or you write your reports and then you're done, right? You book them and you book them and you throw them in jail. And then after you get arrested, that case goes to an ADA, and the ADAs get a lot of cases, guys. Remember, everyone is getting arrested by police officers, right? The county is filled up. So ADAs have to dismiss and or take a lot of cases and lose, okay? They don't have the same resources and time to uh, prosecute cases. The feds, however, they do. Because like I told you guys before, feds don't have to take every case. AUSAs are divas. They're only going to take the cases that are going to win. So if you bring them a case and it's good, they're going to not only take it, they're going to have time to make sure the case is airtight, okay? Remember, guys, when the feds come and get you, there's a reason why they say, I'm scared of the feds. The reason why is because by the time the feds get you, they've been watching you for at least a year, <laughs> you know? They've been watching you for a while. So when they come and they get you, they're going to get you when you're in your boxes and you're yawning like, oh, yeah. next thing you know, it's going to be like five in the fucking morning, six in the morning, you're going to hear, FBI, open up! Oh, shit! And then you're going to run to another door. Oh, man. Next thing you know, you're trying to get out the, the, the fucking uh, the ceiling on top. Like, okay, I, I think I can make it out of here. FBI, open up. And you're like, okay. And then that's it. It's, it's a wrap for you. You're definitely going to just get arrested. You're going to have to take that out. You know what I'm saying? So, so when the feds show up, guys, they've been watching you for a while. They got an airtight case on you. They know your mom. They know your c cousin. They know your girl. They know what time you sleep. They know what kind of boxes you wear. It's over. You know what I'm saying? So, done. So uh, that's how the federal court system and the, and the state courts, the, the main difference is. In the federal court system, you can't record, guys. You cannot record in there, all right? Um, and typically, like I said, uh, with the feds, they don't lose. And AUSAs go a lot harder because they have more time to take 
cases. Like a, a, a regular, like a, the average prosecutor carries maybe 10 to 15 cases in, in their in their you know caseload. An ADA might have 100, 200 cases in their caseload. So they're overworked. You know what I'm saying? Because they're taking every fucking case. They're taking stupid DUIs. They're taking stupid possession cases. They're taking domestic violence charges. They're taking every dumb case at the state or, or, or sheriff's deputy's office or the state police, or whatever. They're taking every dumb case that comes through. All right. And remember, those uniformed officers are arresting on site and then bringing them to jail. You know what I'm saying? They might not have strong probable cause to do it. But the feds, when they go in a date, they've been watching you for months. They, they, they've written reports. They've been watching you on surveillance. They got pictures. They got evidence. They've built a very strong case against you because with the feds, you can't even arrest someone just on probable cause nine out of ten times. You have to go get an indictment, then go get them. You know, or you have to write up a criminal complaint and then get an arrest warrant, then go get them. Very rarely do feds like f see someone committing a crime and then arrest them right there. The only time that typically happens is let's say I'm at home, right? I'm asleep, right? And then I get the phone call. Hey, uh, yo, uh, agent such and such. Uh, we just caught this guy at the bridge with you know, 20 kilos of coke. Uh, we need you to come. You're the duty agent. Okay, cool. You roll out of bed. You go over there. You you see the drugs. You talk to the, the to the to the customs and border protection officers that arrested him. You know they show you pictures, whatever. All right, cool. You call the prosecutor. Hey, I got this guy in custody with CB with, with uh, OFO customs. Uh, they caught him with 20 kilos, whatever it is. Uh, I'm gonna write up a complaint. I'm gonna book him in the jail. You you guys okay to prosecute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. We'll, we'll take the case. All right, awesome. Hang up the phone. Write up your criminal complaint, drop his ass off at the jail, done. But you still have to concur with the AUSA. The state, they ain't concur with nobody. They just, tra traffic stop, hey, smells like weed in your car. Oh, you got a gram in here? All right, buddy, you're going to jail for the night. Bang, done. You know, lock, lock him up, throw him in the jail. You know, he the case might go, the case might not go, might get dismissed, it might win, might lose. They don't care. So that's the difference between a state and local system, guys. Uh, and uh, if I'm going to put it nice and succinctly, the feds cross their T's and dot all their I's. The state doesn't have the time to do it a lot of the time, unless it's a big case, a murder, a, 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 a grape, you know, uh, a kidnapping, something wild like that. You know, then they're going to then they're going to go hard. You know what I'm saying? But if it's like a like a normal, like regular, smegular case, then, you know, they just don't have the time and resources to do it. So the, st the state loses a lot of cases. Uh, let's see here. OK, let's let's see. So we covered the court system. Uh, and then guys, do me a favor. If you guys are brand new here and you just enjoyed that, that stream, like the video. Okay. And then also subscribe to the channel. Get me up to, uh, you know, 5k, 5k. I think we could do that. Get us up to 5k subs. That'd be awesome. And, um, yeah, man, let's get this thing monetized. So, okay. I'm gonna open it up for Q and a now. Uh, let's see. And we will put timestamps in this as well. So let's see here what we got. So start asking questions, guys. I got y'all. If you asked a question earlier, please type it up now so I don't have to scroll up too much. All right. Uh, Manjot Singh Tor asks, which sect depends on uh, on the case? Yes. Uh, you're talking about witness protection. Uh, number one, it's very difficult to get witness protection. And number two, the marshals offer witness protection. So I forgot about that. So their main, the, the, the three main duties they do, guys. Uh, court duty, right, where they're sitting there in their suit, making sure nobody beats up each other. Uh, second is fugitive task force, which everyone is, that's what everyone thinks they do most of the time, but only a small percentage of them actually get to do that. And they do it on rotations like six months here or whatever it may be. And then is the witness protection, which not that many of them do. Okay. Let's see here. What's up next. All right. Uh, that's another conversation. 5k soon from triggers. Thank you so much. Yeah. We need 10k subs on this channel, bro. Yes, Ramon, very informative show. Thank you so much. How did your parents feel about you quitting your job? Okay, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. At first, my I didn't even tell my parents. They they did not like it. Um, my mom was very worried. She was like, "Why would you leave?" Because man, I had a you know six figure secure government job. I was just chilling. I was doing a good time. I had a good time. I was doing really good cases. Um, you know, had a you know a retirement, and everything else like that. And I said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna take a chance on myself," and ended up working out. Uh, but yeah, she didn't like it, but she's good now. Uh, okay. Bang Chow, is there like an internal affairs if people investigate the agents themselves? Fed it. Yes. So, um, so remember how I told you guys there's an office of inspector general? One below that is something called office of professional responsibility. And what those guys do, think of them as internal affairs, but nine out of 10 cases of theirs are not criminal. Okay. It's typically administrative. So let's say you're an agent and you know, you go to a bar and you, you get drunk and you get in a fight and you punch someone and you get arrested. Well, you know, it's like a, you might, you might get a misdemeanor, like assault charge, whatever it is. And uh, OPR is going to probably pick up that case. Uh, OIG is not going to get involved unless it's criminal. 
typically OPR is going to do the administrative cases where you do stupid shit, right? Like I told you, I had a, a incident at a club here in Miami uh, where I got in trouble and there was like a false allegation filed against me. Well, OPR ended up doing that case. I ended up getting cleared, but I had to go in. It was terrifying. You know, they swear you in, you answer the questions, you can't lie, you know, because if you lie, you can get hit with 1001, which is false statements. That's what they got uh, Martha Stewart with. And um, so, yeah, but uh, inter internal affairs is typically office of, pro of professional responsibility in the federal government. They don't call it internal affairs. I call it internal affairs for you guys so you guys would understand what I'm talking about, but it's called OPR. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Truck enforcement DOT officer. Uh, that's probably going to be, that's, uh, I've never, have I worked with DOT? I think, I've never, I've never worked with DOT, bro. Uh, I don't even know if they're federal or not. I have to do a little bit of research on that. I've never worked with them, but I have worked with TABC, which is uh, Texas, Texas Alcohol Beverage Commission. That's pretty lit. You know, they go after people that be like selling drugs out of bars and shit. That shit was fucking awesome. I did a really fun case with them. Uh, Okay, uh, we got, what would it take for someone to be charged with a capital crime? Typically, that's like murder. You know what I'm saying? Your most egregious offenses from the state. Uh, will you tide crypt the K flock car? I think what you mean, will I break down a K flock case? I will break down a K flock case. Don't worry, guys. I will break that down. I'll probably do a poll for you guys. Matter of fact, I might do it at the end of the show. Uh, what agency would you join looking back? Uh, I enjoyed working for HSI, bro. HSI was probably one of the is the best agencies to work for, bro, because they have all the authority, and you know what I mean. And they don't have a lot of the red tape. Like the FBI is like very very famous, but they have a lot of red tape, guys. Like you need to get a supervisor approval to open a case. That's fucking crazy, bro. You know, they have a lot of red tape. It's difficult for them to do their jobs. Uh, a lot of paperwork. Uh, the Three Kings, Myron, do you have to take a polygraph test to be a federal agent? I had to take one for a government job and ended up failing. I said, fuck it, when they want to retest me. Uh, so, you number one, you probably didn't fail, bro, because if you failed, they wouldn't give you a retest. You probably just got it inconclusive. Second, uh, yes, a lot of agencies uh, polygraph. A lot of agencies do. The only agencies I know, to my knowledge right now, that don't polygraph, I think, are the U.S. Marshals and... Um Damn, HSI used to not polygraph. When I came through, I didn't get polygraphed, but I think they polygraph now. Uh, Victor Jimenez, what agency would you join? Would you join looking back? Oh yeah, HSI. I said that one already. Uh, okay, King Life. The Fed know where you send your stash. They know who's on which corner. They know which chick has a kid and will rat their boss out only to get a probation in a few years. House arrest facts. They do their homework. Uh, what's a bad Leo in your opinion? Uh, a bad Leo? What do you mean, like a bad law enforcement officer? Just a lazy guy that doesn't do cases. You know, every agency has that guy that fucking just be sitting around, don't do shit. You ask him, hey, man, can you come out of surveillance? He's going to make an excuse. I got to go watch my kids or whatever. You know what I'm saying? All right, bro, whatever. Like, uh, Why did I pick ICE over FBI? So uh, I will tell you guys this story down the road, but um, I got hired by HSI first. I got I got hired by FBI after I was already an HSI agent. Uh, trucking for, uh, read that one. How do your parents feel? Um, okay. How much time would someone get for alien smuggling in Arizona? He's a first time offender, no prior criminal history. Oh, good question. Uh, probably it depends on how many aliens he got caught. Was there endangerment? There's so many other factors that go into it for human smuggling. So, you know, for example, like, let's say he had him like, in, like in the, in a, you know, in the trunk of a car and it was hot and it was locked. Well, he's going to get hit with something called endangerment, which is going to be, uh, you know, added added points to his uh, sentencing guidelines. So it depends on a lot of the scenarios uh, as well. But um, typically, two to five years for human smuggling is what you get. Uh, let's see here. Can you cover the 1987 FBI Miami shootout? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I could definitely cover um, historical cases for y'all. Um, what is the age cutoff to obtain a federal job? Uh, 50, uh, you got you to gotta get hired before, at uh, 37. 37 is when you got to get hired. Okay. Uh, most agencies hire you at between 23 to 37. Uh, a Terzo, Myron, is Texas the only state with Rangers? Uh, yes. With, with Texas Rangers, yes. Uh, working in Texas versus Miami. Uh, both were fantastic guys, different experiences. Miami, I was like more with that Miami Vice life. You know what I'm saying? I was doing like a lot of, uh, I was doing a, a big drug case here. I was doing Chinese organized crime. I was doing a lot of shit when I was here. But when I was in Texas, it was just straight Mexican cartels because I was on the Mexican border. So I dealt with, a, uh, I dealt with, a, I did, a, um, I dealt with Zetas a lot. A lot of Zetas. That was, that was what I did. Because remember, I was in Laredo, Texas, across from Laredo, Texas was Nuevo Laredo, a.k.a. Tamalipas. Uh, and I did a really uh, cool, um, case where guys were posing as border patrol uh 
agents. Uh, I, I'll, uh, I got stories to tell y'all, man. I got a lot of stories. We'll, we'll, we'll do that on another episode though. Uh, who arrests people for financial crimes? Um, okay. So FBI does financial crimes. HSI does financial crimes. IRS does financial crimes. Uh, a lot of agencies do financial crimes. Secret service does as well to a limited capacity. Uh, oh, we didn't talk about IRS. Uh, IRS. IRS is uh, Internal Revenue Service guys. They do have special agents that do criminal investigations. Um, uh, they have the longest uh, academy, by the way. It's very difficult to become an IRS agent. Uh, I know a good friend of mine is a former IRS agent, and he left to come to HSI. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, IRS is cool. You know, if you do a, a big financial investigation, you definitely want them on your squad. Uh, since drugs are uh, coming up so much, you have any thoughts on how the country would be if all drugs were legalized? Might be a can of worms. Just curious. Reasking so you don't have to scroll. Uh, I mean, if they legalize all drugs, bro, it, it, it could, it could be, it could give, be a gift and a curse, you know? Uh, let's see here. We got Jay Land. What firearms did you use gear and such? Okay. Uh, so actually I'll show y'all right now. Gun safety guys. All right. So. This is what I carried almost every day, a Glock 26, as you guys know. It's it's obviously I, you know, unloaded it and everything else like that. Always keep your gun pointed in a safe direction, never at someone else. Finger always off the trigger. But this is what I carried uh, on duty uh, for most of my career. And then also I had a Glock 19 as well with a light on it. If y'all want me to pull it out, give me fire emojis in the chat and I'll show you guys my Glock 19. It's not next to me here. But yeah, it was a Glock 26. And then I would also use a uh, little, little, um, like a little extra, th th this is like for it to I give you more ammunition. Th and I think this let me hold up to 12 or 13 bullets. All right, let's see here. Shout out to the Second Amendment. Are gangs and terrorists classified as the same thing in the U.S.? All, uh, example, all bike gangs are terrorists? No, no, they're not. Gangs and terrorism organizations are two different things. Uh, what was it like working with RCMP? Fantastic. Shout out to RCMP. I did a really good case with them. I'll, I could talk to you guys about that another day. Um, but yeah, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, guys. That is basically the the um, Canada's version of the FBI. We got Binance Learner. How did your parents feel about you be, being an agent? They love it, man. They loved it. What's the biggest slash most controversial case you ever worked on? Ooh, I got a couple. I got a couple. Uh, I'll tell, I'll, I'll do a story time with you guys where I describe different cases. What agency would you join? Looking back. Oh, read that one in interrogation rooms. Are detectives allowed to lie for the purpose of getting the person to open up and talk? Yes, they are guys. Yes, they are. Law enforcement officers are allowed to lie to you, uh, during interviews. Uh, cosmic rays. Do we even use, do we even use fingerprints anymore? Like trying to find it on site? Yes, they do. They still fingerprint you when you come in. Uh, who are the highest paying paying agencies here? Uh, all the feds pay the same, guys. Whether you're a DEA agent, FBI agent, uh, you know, IRS, whatever, we all get paid on the GS scale. So if you're a 13 working for the FBI versus a 13 working for DEA, it doesn't matter. You get paid the same exact thing. It's all uh, general pay scale. Uh, let's see here. Uh, tips on debating and talking better? Uh, just get, just do it more often, man. You can get better at it. I'm sure you guys watch my old videos. You know, you can uh, you'll see the difference. Uh, did you ever work with the GRC of Canada for a case? I never did, but I did work closely with C uh, RC RCMP and CBSA. Who handles financial crimes? A bunch of agencies do. I answered that one earlier. Uh, <laughs> watch the haters try to come up with a, a way to find some bullshit. Yeah, it is what it is, bro. How do I get hired? Depends on the agency you want to work for. Different agencies have different standards. Did a brother that... The HS took longer to clear you based on your background, even though you were putting your life on the line to protect the country. Uh, no, I mean, once you get one background check cleared, it's faster. You know what I'm saying? The first background check always takes the longest, but I got cleared pretty quickly, man. It was like in four or five months. Normally, it takes like six months to a year. Uh, let's see here. I uh, Myron working 24-7. Facts, guys. This is like my third show, man. I'm dying. But I love y'all. Uh, Sydney, uh, this is amazing. You should do this more often. I love it. Yeah, I got you, Sydney. Uh, the state is more ruthless. Uh, Myron, you still got Leosa after leaving the job. No, I had Flioa when I was working and I had feds as my liability insurance guys, which by the way, if you guys are going to get into federal law enforcement, join Flioa. I'm not, I'm, they're not even paying me to say that, but join it, bro. When I don't, when I, when you get in trouble, you want somebody to be able to get your back. Do feds use civil asset forfeiture more than local police? Do you agree with CAF in general? Uh, 
yes, yeah, they definitely do use as, uh, asset forfeiture, but it's not civil. It's it's they they just take that shit, bro. It's criminal. If the government's able to establish that you were uh, you got proceeds from criminal activity, they they gonna take it. Um, cool that you know all this stuff. Absolutely, man. I, and there's not many people that know this kind of like to this extent. So I, you know, that's why I knew you guys uh, would really enjoy it. Um, does a state agent deputized by feds get paid by both the state and the feds? Okay, excellent question. N yes and no. So when you're uh, a task force officer assigned to the feds, what happens is, let's say you're assigned to DEA, right? And you're, uh, you're same situation I used before. I'm a Miami detective assigned to a narcotics group, uh, a nar narcotics group, but I'm uh, assigned to DEA as a full-time task force officer. Okay, so I get paid by my department, but I work overtime for DEA. I'm doing surveillance for for a DEA case. Well, what the way it works is most of the time is the feds pay for the overtime, okay? So what most of the time what will happen is I'll get paid by my agency. I'll work the overtime. I'll put in my, my hours, and then uh, the, the department will pay me that overtime, but then the feds will reimburse the department for that overtime that I worked for the fed case. Does that make sense? So yes, my agency pays me the overtime, but the feds reimburse it because it was for their case. And that's something called a uh, slot typically. Uh, do you use facial recognition sometimes? Which cases am I going to cover? Uh, you know what I might do? I might do like a story time with y'all where I cover one case an episode that I did. I did. Uh, do K flock case. Okay, I'll do a vote at the end of the show. Uh, Myron, do you have to take a polygraph to be a... Uh, yep, read that one already. Holy shit, you guys have got these questions coming. Uh, okay. Can you talk about how you take notes and what you look for when taking notes? Also, what got you to start taking notes? The reason why I take notes, guys, is because, and here's the thing. When you do most interviews, you can record it. So I know guys that go in there and they just record and they don't write notes. I personally like notes because when I first became an agent, you didn't, you weren't mandated to record interviews. So I would just write notes because I, I just it, ke it kept me busy. And it also, it would force you to really retain the information when, you, when you're listening and you're writing it down so that you can catch people when they lie. Uh... Will a federal agency hire someone who disclosed their criminal record on an application? Yes, if it's not a felony, or or like a conviction of of a, of a mis of like a um, domestic abuse, like beating up on your wife and shit. Will you go ever? Will you go over the Casanova Rico case? I can absolutely do that for y'all. Can absolutely do that for y'all. Can you talk about how you take notes? Oh, I read that one. Do do federal agents get to carry their guns in states with strict gun laws? Absolutely. Yeah, bro. You carry your gun wherever the hell you want when you're fed. I used to carry my gun on the plane. I'd be in the airport with it, like, you know what I'm saying? If anything, you're you're there, you're 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 there, kind of as like, cause you're wearing plain clothes. Nobody knows, you know. I when I was armed, I was always like looking around, like making sure you know things were good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, I was always like, you know, let let somebody like rob a gas station or some shit in front of me, or someone put a gun in someone's face in front of me. I would shoot him, bro. You got to protect the public. Uh, can you educate us on gun safety in the Second Amendment? All right, so let me go get this Glock 19 real quick for y'all. Give me one sec. I'll be right back. All right, guys, this is my Glock 19. This is what I used pretty much every day when I worked for the government, okay? Uh, this is a Glock 19 with a um, Surefire XC1, okay? A weapon light, right? Obviously, it's loaded right now, but we're gonna unload it, make it safe, okay? Gun always face the safe direction, right? Never point it at anyone, always in a safe direction. Uh, finger always off the triggers I told y'all before. And uh, yeah, but you know, basic gun safety man is, you know, if you're not going to go do nothing, bro, just keep it, you know, have it unloaded. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if you're not going to use it for anything, like, you never know who, especially if you, uh, if you live by yourself, that's one thing. But if you ha live with people, especially children, like, always have it locked up uh, and put away, okay? Basic gun safety. Always keep it pointed in a safe direction. Always finger off the trigger. And, yeah, man, just simple stuff, man. Be safe, guys. But yeah, that was that was a uh, gun I carried all the time, and I always I know you guys are probably wondering what I use for a holster. This is a insane Kydex creation. This is uh, the holster I use for my Glock 19. Really good. Um, and as you guys can see, right, I would I would have it 
like this, right? Uh, just imagine it's loaded. Right now it's not loaded, but well, actually, you know what? We'll put the slide to the front, okay? It's not loaded, guys. Right. Oh, always make sure it's safe, right? Look in there. Make sure none in there. Cool. So it's not loaded. Okay. This is, I would have it in a holster like this, right? And then I always a Penix carried, right, guys? So I put it right here. Bang. Boom. Nice. And then, and it's good because you, you can get it right away. You know, you, you come in, sweep it, boom, raise the shirt up, and then bang, you can draw it, right? No issues. Which I could talk to you guys about that too. I could do an episode on like gun safety and how to draw a gun and all this other stuff. Okay. Uh, what's the best military branch for IT career? Uh, any of them, bro. Let's see here. Am I familiar with Army, Hell, Army and Hellcat and the uh, issues with the FBI? Yes, I am aware of that case. We could talk about that one too. Uh, no, my Glock is actually not modified, guys. All I have on it is a light. You can't, most, most agencies will not let you modify your gun. Uh, have I ever been shot before? No. Uh, you said an extended clip. Actually, what it is, guys, is it's a, uh, it's a Glock. It's a Glock 17 magazine, right? And I just have an X grip on it, right? So it sits flush on the gun. So it gives me more rounds because the Glock, the Glock 19 is 15 rounds and then the Glock 17 is, uh, is uh, 17 rounds. So, all right, cool. So we've been going for about an mm, hour, 35 minutes, guys. We're going to wrap this thing up here in a second. Uh, let's see here. Any other questions? Can you have a switch on a Glock? <laughs> no, that's illegal. Uh, or you might be able to get it for a permit. Did I cuff a Latina while I was on duty? No, I did not. Uh, let's see here. Gun range gens be ready. Yeah, I might do it. I might do that for y'all. Yeah. Oh yeah. Always a Penix carry, bro. I never t put on my side. I like a Penix carry because when you're a Penix carry, you can get it. For, you can get it. You know, immediately. You know, if I'm if I'm here, right? Let's say let's say I'm in a in a car, right? Or I'm sitting down, whatever. I can I'll just all I'll do, right, is I'll raise my shirt up and then bang, I can draw and just pull it out like that. You know what I'm saying? And then put it right back. So and it's not loaded, guys. It's um I never ever practice with a loaded gun, by the way. Never ever draw or any of that shit with a loaded gun. Ever, guys. Always unloaded. Right? You dry fire, you draw with an empty gun every single time. So yeah. So appendix carry, right? You uh you come, right? You come like this. Oh, whatever, you know, or if even if you're standing up, bang, raise it up like that, bang, pull out the gun, punch it out. Done. You know what I'm saying? Finger always off the trigger, point in a safe direction. Okay. Boom. Simple shit. Uh okay, let's see here. All right. So guys, do me a favor. Like the video, okay? Comment below for the algorithm. And what else? Subscribe to the channel. Oh, and I actually you know what? While I'm while I'm here, let me mod up some of you guys in here. Uh, let's see here, because I know I know some of you guys. Sorry guys, I have I've been like looking at the chat every now and then, so it's like uh, so bear with me here. Yo, do you guys enjoy the chat? Give me some fire emojis if you guys enjoyed the uh, the show tonight. Give me some fire emojis if you guys enjoyed the show. If you guys enjoyed the show. Da -da -da -da. Let's see here. I'm going to start giving some of y'all wrenches. And thank you guys so much for the support, man. You guys truly, you know, make everything better, bro. We get a lot of hate. Shit's annoying. And y'all be, be showing love, and it makes it, like, all worth it. You know, and hell, you guys will get to learn a little bit more about me and my background. Uh, you know, I, I, don't, I've, I don't see any YouTube show, uh, YouTube channels out there that give this kind of uh, information at this kind of level. Because, you know, not many people worked as a federal agent before, you know. But I was out there doing it, baby. Like, I showed you all the receipts, man. I, I, won a, I got a director's award. So, you know, if there's anyone qualified to talk about it for sure, and we'll be breaking it down. So, okay, chat, I need you guys to tell me. What do y'all want me to break down? What case do you guys want me to break down 
Uh, name your person. Uh, and then I'm going to go through the chat right now and look. Tell me what y'all want me to break down on the next show. Let's see here. Just waiting for the chat to catch up and y'all tell me what you want me to break down. Okay, I see 6 9 I see K Flock. I see NBA Youngboy, Omni and Hellcat, Tory Lanes, R. Kelly, El Chapo, King Vaughn, uh, Casanova. Oh, shit. Okay. Woo. All right. Ran House. All right. Looks like we're going to have a lot of content to cover then. Holy. Ghislaine Maxwell, Fetty Wap. Okay, I see a couple Fetty Waps. <laughs> Someone said OJ Simpson. Y'all hilarious. Uh, Nipsey Hussle. I didn't even know he had a case. Epstein. Okay. Now, guys, preferably I'd like to do federal cases. I know you, I know you guys are giving me some state cases here. I could do state cases too. But the thing with state cases is they're very um, – it's tough to get the paperwork for it. You know what I'm saying? Because like, I got to like go through the state to try to figure out who arrested them, which agency – Try to get the 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 um the state documents because but federal is a lot easier because I can use a website called Pacer and find it and I'm far more knowledgeable about federal cases but I can definitely do state cases too I know this K Flock one is is a is a is a federal uh, sorry a state case so I could talk about that um let's see here yeah a lot of K Flocks uh Alec Baldwin Ghislaine Maxwell Tory Lanes. Fetty Wap, Fetty Wap, that would be, yeah, I could do the Fetty Wap one. The Fetty Wap one is a, is a drug case. Someone said Pill Cosby. Y'all are hilarious, bro. Okay. Okay, a lot of K-Flocks I see here. All right. Uh, all right, cool. So, man, at this rate, I might have to I might have to give y'all, like, at one or two case breakdowns a week because you guys, I can already tell y'all going to be want, wanting this content. Uh, okay. All right. I, I see here. Okay, a lot of, all right, awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. All right, guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed that first episode. We got plenty more heat coming for you guys. Like I told y'all, this is content that you won't find anywhere else because ain't no former feds going to give you all this kind of sauce, man. Obviously, like I said, we ain't talking about nothing classified, nothing sensitive. It's all public information, but it's public information that I'm going to bring to you guys in a digestible, entertaining format. And uh, hope you guys really enjoyed the show, man. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys. Uh, I'm going to cl get clips from this and put it out on the channel. Share this channel with your friends. Anyone that wants to get into law enforcement, definitely share this channel with them. And I'll catch you guys. Uh, I'll see. I'll see when I'll do another stream. I was going to tell. I was gonna do one stream per week, but I might have to do it a little bit more frequently because I know y'all want that sauce because I'm already seeing right now a bunch of cases coming in. So, um, all right. Love you guys. I'll catch you guys tomorrow, 7 p.m. We're going to have John from Modern Life Dating in the fucking house. It's going to be lit. Uh, we're going to break down making money, cryptocurrency, living in Japan, dating in Japan. Uh, we're going to talk about updates with him, uh, so, uh, healing from trauma. Uh, and then we're going to have an after-hour show with some girls. So, uh, yeah, guys, hope you guys enjoyed that. Check out uh, the last episode we did with Fulio, really good interview. And also check out the show we did with him and some lovely ladies. And other than that, man, y'all take it easy. Peace. Catch you guys on the next one.